It's been a while since I made a video, so I thought I'd make a new one. Get a little update on the truck. I'll move the turbo around. Got one side of the frame rail boxed in. I'm working on the other side. Cut the heater box, fiberglassed it in. Now I'm doing body work on it. A couple more things left to go and I can fire it up. I'll show you where I move the turbo. So the turbo was back here. I had big I had a 90 coming up and then another 90. And it was setting about here. And then I had the downpipe. Well when I changed the transmission and got it all bolted in, my downpipe wasn't working. So I was getting a bunch of negative feedback on where I put the turbo and it was gonna be laggy and so I ended up putting it clear up here on the firewall. I got this small little 90. I got the O2 bungs in and there, one in the crossover pipe, and then I put a bung in here for the wide band. And then uh, I had to modify the intercooler a little bit, drill a hole through the core support. I got injectors in, fuel lines, I got one fuel line left to run, spark plug boots, uh, what else, the 4L60, I, uh, I got the 4L60 apart, it was out of a 95, so I ended up having to uh, get a valve body out of a 96 and up. So I went to pick and pull and got a valve body out of the 2000 and put the valve body in and I put the B&M shift kit in, which was junk. Don't buy a B&M shift kit. So all I ended up doing, because it just comes with colored spacers that you put between the one and two accumulator piston and the three and four accumulator piston. And I feel like that's going to do more damage than anything, so I didn't use those. I ended up uh, drilling the space separator plate, changing the boost valve. I got some Sonics pinless one and two, and three and four accumulator pistons. Changed those. Um, there was another piston that I changed to. I can't remember what the name of it was, but it was a pinless piston as well. So, all the accumulator pistons got changed out for Sonic's pinless ones. Um, I put the Corvette servo in it. That was about it. So, I, ha I bought the transmission for 100 bucks. I sold the 700 for three. So, kind of made out there. I had to buy a new torque converter because it came out of an S10. And I didn't want to run the S10 torque converter. So I went down to O'Reilly's and got a torque converter. Changed that up. Uh, I got the seats mounted. One of them. Passenger side seats. The Cadillac CTS seats. Got rid of the bench seat. This one's all mounted in. I got to wire it. Got to mount that one still. I got the PCM mounted. Uh, oh, hey Axel. And then I got all, I got the fuse box done. All the wire shroud on. Wiring looks pretty neat. Uh, the electric fans I got mounted and the shroud that I made radiators in and then I this is the uh, heater box I shaved I cut like this much off of it I'll show you a piece I cut off of it so I fiberglassed it in I did fiberglass on the inside fiberglass on the outside and then I hit it with a flat disc, knocked down all the edges, ridges, bubbles, all that good stuff. And hit it with some dirt glass. And this is the second coat of Bondo. 
one more coat and it should be good to go just patched in a rust spot right there and got the undercoating on this side bondo almost done on this door uh, frames all boxed in on this side drill lines are ran they're just rolled up underneath the truck I ended up having to I went all the way to West Virginia got a policy unit for my rear end put it in it everything looked good had to do to rebuild the rear ends look at it for me it's one of my good buddies and uh, he said everything was fine so I put it in and then I uh, I go and I uh, try to rotate the tires to see if I could get it to lock up. Well, the spider gear on the passenger side was completely stripped out. So, I'm like, heck, now I gotta buy a, uh, hey, get off my rag, dog. Now I gotta buy a new posi unit. So it was a gov lock anyway. I didn't know nothing about them until after I bought it. And I actually didn't want to run it after I found out what type of rear end, what, what kind of uh, mechanism it was. It's got a little weight that engages and locks it up. And if you just go and punch it and do a burnout, you just explode the thing. So you got to do a little burnout and then it locks. And then you can just go, and it's locked positive. So I ended up taking it back out. There's no diff in my rear end at all right now. I'm trying to come up with the money so I can buy a good Yukon or something. So uh, I actually ended up taking the original one out of my truck that was also a good lock. I sold it on eBay. It's a rebuildable core. For 75 bucks no I take that back dude made an offer didn't want the ring and pinion with it so I sold it for 75 bucks or 65 dollars without the ring and pinion so dude saved 15 bucks didn't get the ring and pinion so I was like hell with it I'm gonna put, put the uh, ring and pinion on eBay so I put the ring and pinion on eBay and sold it was 273 gears sold it within I don't know, 20 hours for 75 bucks for the ring of pinion. So then I'm like, well, hell, I'm selling these things like hotcakes. So I took the one I went all the way to West Virginia to get, took it out of my rear end, and I'm like, I'm going to put it on uh, eBay too. So I put it on eBay and ended up selling it as a rebuildable core within two days with no ring of pinion. All it needed was, was a spider gear. Ended up selling it for 75 bucks. So, all the parts I've taken off of this 5.3, the stock manifolds I've sold on eBay, I sold them for $50. I sold the stock cam for $40. A stock cam, right? Who wants a stock 5.3 cam? I sold the stock 5.3 injectors because I got um, LS6 injectors. And then I... Uh, I ended up running, buying the adapters that went from the minis to the, uh, I think these are EV1 or EV6, something like that. So I cut the mini side off, soldered them in, and I bought the uh, aluminum spacers. Put some assembly lube on it, popped it right on. So I sold the stock 5.3 injectors. I sold, what else did I sell off this motor? I sold an oil pan that I picked up and swapped me. I, Cause when I changed, when I had this motor upside down and was rebuilding it, the oil pan that was on it has the gasket that's riveted on. Well, right where the oil filter is, there is a, uh, another little section of the gasket actually part of the gasket 
for the uh, oil cooler port. Well, that uh, that piece of the gasket stayed on the oil pan, and I didn't notice it. So I threw the new oil pan gasket on and went to torque the bolts down. I get to the second bolt, and the pan completely shatters. I'm talking split in two when I got to that bolt right at the um, right at the uh, oil cooler port. So beware when you're taking these apart, make sure that part of that gasket comes off with it. Because if not, you're going to be getting a new oil pan like I did. So I got on eBay and I got a Gen 4 truck pan. Uh, what else have I sold off of this thing? I sold the clutch fan. I sold it for like 30 bucks because I'm running the electric fans. So if you guys go to do an LS swap, all the parts you take off, put them on eBay. Search what somebody's selling the same part for, use in the same condition, and then undercut them and sell yours $5 cheaper. $5 cheaper. If you're not going to use it, what's the point in scrapping it if you can sell it for fit? 20 to 50 hell even a hundred bucks you know so once you take all these stock parts off put them on ebay because somebody with that motor stock in their truck their parts are going to break and they're going to be a cheap ass and not want to buy a brand new part and they're going to want to buy a used part and if you undercut everybody else on ebay your parts going to sell first and it's just less money you have in the build at the end of it so I highly suggest all your takeoff parts, putting them on eBay. I sold the stock valve springs because I upgraded the valve springs in this and put the uh, beehive springs in here. And I sold the stock 5.3 valve springs and I sold them for 40 bucks. But the good thing about that is if you got like an old small block Chevy, they're only rate, the springs in those are only rated for like 45 thousandths. So it's kind of a cheap upgrade for an old small block Chevy. So those are still purposeful. That's why I kind of kept them around when I took them off because I already knew that. So, but yeah, I just wanted to get caught up. I'm hoping that I can produce some little better videos. I bought a GoPro and it's not worth a shit. So. I'll probably end up putting it on eBay and selling it, trying to get my money back out of it. So now I'm just using my phone because it it's a Galaxy S9. It takes pretty good videos. It's just a pain to edit them afterwards. There's not very many good video editing apps. So I'm wanting to get a good Canyon with a tripod. And I can actually do some tutorials with you guys. Maybe... Um, or you guys can just watch me fuck shit up because I do that every so often. Or I'll get the TIG welder out and sometimes I'll lay a nice beautiful weld and sometimes it'll just look like bird shit or hammer dog ass, whatever you want to call it. So, yeah, it's coming together. I got to, uh, I just got a couple more things. I'm kind of waiting on some money to come flowing back in. The weather's starting to break, so I'm not dreading coming out here and waiting on the heater to warm up. So we're going to get this thing running, take it up to Garrett's Rod Shop, get it tuned, and then we're going to uh, do a couple burnouts in it. Hopefully it don't break the transmission or the rear end or help blow the motor up. And then... Uh, gonna have some fun with it which uh, I'll probably only play with it a couple times because weather will be nice I'll be wanting to ride my Harley unless I gotta take my daughter to school then hell I might throw the bed back on this and drive it for the summer without painting it and then this winter I'll bring it in here and I'll get all the body work done that's left to do because I pretty much got most of it done I just gotta straighten some stuff out now I got one patch of doing the bed. I got a shave of the fuel door because I switched the tanks and got rid of the two saddle tanks and got a uh, 30 gallon blazer tank. 
31 gallon, I think it was. So I'll get the blazer tank. I got the blazer tank already ready to go. Got a crossbar with the use the factory straps, factory sending unit with a uh, cheap Kimzo eBay fuel pump. So hopefully that's not the downfall of the truck. I read some pretty good reviews, and then I read some pretty crappy reviews. But the only bad reviews that I really read were the hose kept falling off of the fuel pump on the Kimzo, and it's a Aeromotive replica. Looks exactly the same, just a name on it. And it's supposed to be rated for like 700 horsepower. So, I, I put one of the crimp on type hose clamps on it, so hopefully the fuel pump won't be the leak, weak link. Hopefully the only weak link that we have in this build is the 4L60E, because everybody knows 4L60Es don't last behind a lot of horsepower. When they're only rated for 300 foot-pounds of torque, and you go put in five, six, seven hundred foot-pounds of torque through a 4L60E, it's gonna be on the ground, or you're gonna have five neutrals, or you're definitely gonna at least be missing three and four, because uh, you're gonna break a sun shell, or burn up three four clutch pack normally it's the sun shell strips out or you get uh, leakage through the three four accumulator piston so there's a lot of other problems with them I wanted to try and do the 4L60E because I like the gear ratio of the 4L60E over the 4L80 it's a lot cheaper 4L80s are, I mean they're a lot cheaper than a 6L80 or a 6L90, but I mean, I figure what the hell, it's worth a shot for a hundred bucks. I got another hundred dollars in labor and material. My labor, which I mean, it's my truck, so my labor is free. If it was somebody else's, that'd be a different story. And uh, so, actually, I lie. I ended up having 300 in because I bought a new torque converter. So. I sold the 700 R4, and what I sold it for, put the 4L60, a beefed up 4L60 in my truck. So, I mean, if it burns up, it burns up. The 700 wasn't gonna last either, so. But now, I'll have it tuned for 4L60, and then all I have to do is a, a relearn on the 4L80 when I finally do upgrade. I'd like to get a 4L60 and have it actually built with an upgraded sun shell and have it turned into a 4L70, get the extra clutch dip, the clutch back, and uh, yeah, hopefully we can run a 4L60 because I, I like the gear combo of that a lot better. Especially once I put it to the 373s, it's going to be bad. And then... We'll probably end up upgrading the turbo layer to BS Racing Turbo. We'll see how bad the GT45 limits the power. They could, I mean, you could get 600 out of them. They, they say they max out at like 540 or something. I can't remember. It's been forever since I looked up on it. But when I only paid like $150 for a brand new turbo with a one-year warranty, you can't go wrong. It's worth getting it set up for the 150 bucks if it blows up for 150 bucks by the time I buy a big name turbo a Garrett or a Precision you know or Turbonetics by the time I buy one of them I could have already put I could have already bought 10 to 15 GT45s and have them lined up in my garage and just swap it, swapping them out every time I spit bearing on one of them so as long as this thing doesn't eat a compressor wheel, we'll be all right. But I'm running mass airflow, so, and it's a long route. So I doubt the truck will eat it. It's gonna have to hit that. It's gonna go through the intercooler anyway, so. But, yeah. I'll get back with you guys when I get the heater box done. Get the frame all done. Hopefully we'll be tuning this thing and doing some burnouts before long.
wife's up in Michigan for a birthday party, so I got all weekend. Me and the dog to just get it done. So we'll be putting in some hours out here. The weather's gonna be fairly decent in like 45, 50 range. I'm running the space here right now because it dropped down to like 30 and I'm just keeping it comfortable in here. But the door's standing wide open, so. Try and keep some ventilation. My dog don't want to hang out with me. Cause I'm grinding and welding and he's scared to death of it. Big old pansy dog until some he walks down the alley and he's barking out through the fence. So Yep. There he is being a lazy mutt. Kept the bench seat out of the truck just for him to lay on it. He's probably ready for me to go in. Yeah, I got the Harley out. I don't know if I showed you all the Harley yet. Look at that beautiful girl. So this was a Harley I bought. My dad's neighbor was going on a beer run after work on it. Made it about half a block from his house, a block. The kid backed out of a driveway and he slammed into him. So the insurance company totaled it. This thing was originally black. Paint was all messed up on it. But when I bought it off of him, the original 21 inch wheel and the original Sportster forks were destroyed. So I ended up, my buddy had this inverted wide glide front end. I'm gonna powder coat these, this lower half here, black. And then his buddy had this um, ultra classic front wheel and he had a ultra classic rear wheel so I bought the rear wheel and the front wheel off of them for like 200 bucks ran the front wheel and the white wall I miss mean, I already had a brand new tire on the rear of it but it wasn't a white wall so I took the other white wall off put it on I had to do a single piston conversion on the front and then I got this eBay Springer seat ran it you know the little Side mount tail light. You got those are some uh, Dyna turn signals, and then pack the back half of the fender off, and then ran it like that. Was riding it around the factory paint, and then I rode it for about a month. Oh yeah, I had to replace forward controls on it. Ran it for about a month, and then, uh, what was it? I ran it for a month, and then the clutch burned up on it. So, I ended up getting the clutch, I can't remember, it was a uh, Energy One racing clutch, stage two. So I ran a stage two clutch in it, and uh, what else did I change when I was in there? change a clutch I think I changed the drive chain and then the oil and then uh, I was riding it for about another week after I changed the clutch and the gas tank started pouring gas out the bottom right here so I, I uh, was like oh I gotta fix this so I take it off and flip it over pour all the gas out of it and I buy a uh, POR 15 kit, gas tank sealer kit, and pour it in there, shake it around, let it set for like a week. And I'm mad because it's July and I can't ride my Harley. So then I put it back on, put some gas in it, put it back on, put some gas in it, and then uh, go for a ride. And it's got a little dribble after about a day of riding. So I'm furious, so I go to uh, AutoZone and I get this gas tank patched up. It's like a two-part epoxy you mix up, it's like a clay. I slap it on the bottom of there to get me home because I didn't want 
you know. I left 20 miles outside of where I was at. So I slapped that on there. And this stuff ended up bubbling up, not sticking to the gas tank. Ended up getting all over the crotch of my jeans and ruined a pair of jeans. It's, I still got them for work jeans in the garage, you know, if I'm welding or something. But it's all over it. Looks like I had them on backwards and crap my pants. But uh, that didn't work. So then I get this other stuff that's like silicone based stuff. And it actually works. Stopped it. And then I'm like, man, I gotta buy a new tank. So then I'm looking, and I'm looking. And I didn't really have the money then. Cause I just finished the garage. So I was like busted, no money. So then I'm like, hell with it, I'm welding it. So I pop this tank off of there shake all the gasoline out of it, blow it out with an air gun, and then uh, poured some acetone in it, shook the acetone around, dumped it out, blew it out with an air gun again, and I just hammered it to it, layer, 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 with my old MIG welder, and grind it down flat, and I was like, well, now I'm going to paint it. I mean, I got a big old weld on the bottom of it. So, called my buddy Scotty up. He was working at Garrett's Rod Shop then. And uh, he'd had some paint at home, some red and some black. One was a Ford color and one was a Mercedes. So he was like, I probably got enough paint at the house with the paint test. You just have to get some clear. Well, we just painted my dad's 66 and painted the roof. So he had half a gallon of clear left over because he bought a whole gallon to clear coat just the roof of his truck so I ended up giving him it was some good PPG stuff so I ended up giving him 50 bucks for it and we hammered the clear we painted this thing I body worked it I I hammered up the fender rolled it up kind of put the little lip on it widened it up a little bit and then I uh, body worked it made it all look like it was factory and then we masked it off and we painted the whole thing red first and then we went back and I painted the black over it which the black's got I mean it's got all kinds of pearl in it you kind of see the pearl the red's got all kinds of pearl in it so we masked it off and then we just pounded a whole half gallon of clear coat on it. And then after we were done, we were gonna paint these on originally. We got like five different sets of these cut out from us, from Garrett's, the vinyl guy there, cut us out five negatives and positives. And then I couldn't deter, I was like, well, I rode it for like two weeks with nothing on the side of the tank. The pinstripe wasn't on here, because we were going to paint this all on. And then we were like, well, you know what, before we do all that, let's put it back on the bike, fill it up with gas, and make sure it's not going to leak, since how we just put $500 worth of paint on it. And then, uh, so we get it all, so we got it all painted up and cleared. And it didn't leak, so I decided I'm going to pinstripe this, so I bought some silver, and I bought some white, and the white was looked best, I thought. I still haven't done the fender yet, I'll get to that, but uh, did the white on the tank, and then I just threw one of the positives stickers on there to see what it looked like, because we were going to use the negatives if we painted it anyway. So I put the positive on it. And I liked it, so I threw the other one on there. And I've just been riding around with the sticker on there and the pinstripe. I got to get it out yesterday, the day before yesterday. I gotta get the oil changed in it. But it still runs pretty good. The paint job turned out immaculate. I have it no orange pill to it at all. I mean, but we put the clear on pretty wet. We hammered it on, painted it outside under a little shed roof and didn't get no dirt in it, no bugs, no orange peel. I've yet to wet sand and buff this thing. It looks 
beautiful. I mean, it's got so much shine to it. I mean, look at all that. Look at that shine. Thing is nasty, bud. That shine is. I mean, it turned out great. I got. I'm gonna get back to work. If I had a uh, tripod, I'd record some of it for you guys. But this video is gonna be long enough anyway, and it's gonna be boring and me just rambling on, you know, not showing me actually doing any work. So I'm gonna get back to it. Hopefully I'll be able to buy a tripod soon so I can actually get some people to watch my videos. <laughs> so, Alright y'all, like, subscribe, comment, tell me to stop making videos, tell me if you want to see more of my builds, tell me if I should go curl up in a hole and die somewhere, you know. I'm in for all the negativity and the positivity. Peace out y'all.